In this second part of the hand rig video, we're going to take the uh, custom properties that we created in the last video, and we're going to start connecting them up to perform a function, to give them some functionality, using an expressions constraint. So to get started, let's go ahead and bring in an expressions constraint. I'll jump over to my asset browser, and under constraints, we have the mighty expressions constraint. I'll just drag and drop it into my scene, and it immediately pops up here in my uh, navigator. I'll lock that first thing because uh, I have a real funny habit of not locking yes, that when I'm working. Yes, he does. Back under properties, though, I'm going to select my wrist controller. And in order for an expressions constraint or really any form of animation to see these new properties I've created, the animate button has to be active for all of them. So make sure once you've created these, once you're about to hook them up, that you do go through and switch on the animate button. There's nothing more frustrating than trying to add these in as a, a sender or receiver and not seeing your new properties. So make sure you have clicked the animate button. And to get started, uh, the expression that I'm going to create here inside the, uh, the spreadsheet window is rather extensive. I have my own workflow that I like to do for organizing this spreadsheet. If it doesn't coincide with exactly what you like in your workflow, that's totally fine. Use whatever's more comfortable for you. So, uh, what will we be controlling? I always like to set up my receivers first. Dur uh, let's focus just on our finger curls for this particular video. So, uh, we're going to be focusing on the FK effectors for our knuckles. So, we're going to be selecting these and bringing these down into our spreadsheet. Now, I am using the Maya key set, so instead of alt-dragging, I'm going to be X-dragging these into my window. So, I'll hold down X drag in and we'll bring this in as a receiver. Now if I expand this out so you can see everything we're looking at, we have sca uh, rotation, scaling, and translate for just this one knuckle. We don't need scaling, we don't need translation. So I'm going to right click and clear the cell, right click, clear the cell. All we have is rotation. What we're going to be uh, mostly picking on is going to be Z rotation, which is our, our forward uh, rotation, but that's going to be on a local axis. I'll switch everything to local when we're done. I'll show you how to do that. I just wanted to go ahead and mention that before we go too much further. So I'll grab the second knuckle and X-drag just below, bring it in as a receiver, right-click, clear, right-click, clear. So just all we have is rotation again, just to reiterate. Drag in, again, receiver, clear, clear. So now I have all of the rotations for this first finger in place, ready to receive data. I'm actually going to skip a cell for organizational purposes, and we'll come over here to the middle finger and repeat the process. So when you're setting this up, be a little patient. Fortunately, this is uh, very easy to do. I really, once you get the hang of it, I really appreciate the spreadsheet style system of these expressions. It allows you for a lot of power uh, without being too confused if you've ever used a spreadsheet in your life. For those of you that aren't uh, big spreadsheet users, well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so... Almost done. It looks like I missed one, but that's okay. Oh, excuse me. There's ring three. Scroll down a little bit. That's a pinky. Receiver. Clear cell. Clear cell. Looks like I switched that guy to local a second ago. And last one for now. Receiver and clear out scaling, clear out translation. So I have all four of my fingers here nicely lined up. Now right now these are set to uh, global rotation, unless otherwise uh, indicated when I right. accidentally click local. So we need to set these all to local rotation. No matter which way the hand is, uh, is oriented, we need these to rotate on their local axis. Fortunately, this is very easy. Right click and switch to local transformations on each one. So I'll just take a quick second and do that. Looks like I switched that one back. There you go. And locals down the board. And we'll scroll back up here to the top. And now we need to start sending in some of our attributes from our wrist controller. So I'll select my wrist controller, and I'm going to skip a column, and we'll put these over here in the C column. I'll hold down X and drag my wrist controller in, and we'll send these in as senders. Now let me scoot 
my spreadsheet over and we'll expand this column so we can see everything that's here and we get every one of our custom properties and we get some more stuff that we don't particularly need right now for example we have the rotation scaling and translation of this effector that we don't need so I'll clear that cell here's scaling we'll clear that here's rotation we'll clear that so uh, that gets, gets rid of everything we don't need I would just again for organizational purposes like to put these in the same order in which they appear here in the list so at the top of the list we would have sliders, uh, slider enable I'll move all fingers curl out of the way bring slider enable up then next we have index curl so I'll move finger spread out of the way bring up index curl middle curl ring curl then pinky curl uh, then we're gonna have thumb curl which is down here thumb swivel finger spread which I think was this one yep that's right and then finally all fingers curl down here at the very bottom so now uh, this list is all set up ready to send data to our fingers now again just for this video I'm focused on getting the fingers curling properly now in order to make this happen we're gonna have to designate uh, a vector that's gonna make references to different cells in our spreadsheet so here's just a real simple example of what we're doing I'll uh, pick on just the index finger for a moment and if I look over here my C2 cell is our index slider so uh, to make things nice and easy to understand I'll begin by editing this and throwing in a vector so we'll do curly brace we'll do, we want the Z rotation so we need 0 for X 0 for Y and we need C2 for our Z I'll press enter now if I grab index curl and rotate it we break our finger <laughs> <laughs> so that looks very very painful we actually want negative rotation internally we still want to see a positive number here but on the inside we need this to rotate in a negative direction so all I'm gonna do is come back in here to C2 and we'll set this to negative C2 which will just invert the value for us so now as I take index curl and pull it down we're rotating downwards now to make things nice and fast remember that you can copy and paste uh, values here inside the spreadsheet so I'll hit control C drop down hit control V drop down hit control V so now if I grab my index curl and we slide it up oh, don't want to resize that I did anyways so now we are curling our entire finger very nice so that is a very uh, simplistic control but it doesn't allow for us to control uh, using our all fingers curl later on in order to do that we're gonna need an if statement because uh, if we just add all fingers curl and our individual fingers together we could end up over rotating we will end up getting our rotation further than 90 degrees which will cause our fingertip to protrude through our hand and all sorts of other nastiness so to control this we need to set up an if statement a fairly simple if statement it could look confusing at first so if you uh, have a hard time following along with it just uh, watch me do this once and then go back over it kind of study it a little bit it'll, it'll be easy to follow eventually I promise so uh, I'm gonna come in here to an empty cell here in my C column I like saving my C column for uh, basically all of my work so uh, here inside the C just under our senders we'll, cl we'll do if and I'll open up a, uh, a parentheses now I need to check I need to basically run a test and see if my uh, the sum if you will of my all fingers curl and my index curl are more than 90 so my test area has to be separated inside parentheses so I'll open up another parentheses and I could close them uh, some people do that I don't particularly I just kinda keep it in my head <laughs> so I've opened up another parentheses now inside this test area I'm gonna need to add together C2 which was my index curl if you remember and C9 which is my all fingers curl so I'll open up a third parentheses so now I need to go ahead and set that up if C2 plus C9 close parentheses is greater than I'll throw a space so it's just a little easier to see is greater than 90 degrees close parentheses so now there's my whole test if the combination of C2 and C9 is greater than 90 degrees comma if it is now uh, here's our true argument if it they if it is greater than 90 I want you to output just 90 degrees this is gonna cap our value at 90 so to speak so that we can't go any higher than that 90 degree rotation then a comma my false value on the other hand 
will be just go ahead and key, and stay with the sum of C2 plus C9, which will be uh, the sum of my index curl plus my all fingers curl. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. All right, so we'll go back and just re-input C2. I'll keep it capped for clarity's sake. Plus C9, close parentheses, close parentheses a final time, and I'll press Enter, and already we get 32.86. So that whole thing went through flawlessly. So now, instead of pointing my index curl directly at C2, instead of basically plugging it right into the slider as you see here, what I'm going to do is plug it into this cell down here, which is actually C10. So it's going to feed through this if statement before it goes into my finger. So we'll leave the negative sign in there. We're going to need that. And we'll change this to C10, like so. And again, we, you notice over here in our result, this is awesome. We get 0, 0, and negative 32.86. So now let's give this a quick shot. We have individual slider wiggling for our index. We scroll down. We have all fingers curl which is going to push us even further, like so. So now we have total control. We can move all the fingers at once. Now given all we have is one knuckle hooked up. So to speed things up, I'll go ahead and hit Control-C here at uh, the negative C10 field. We'll input this into the rest of our fingers for the index, or the rest of our knuckles for the index. And now let's test that out before we go any further. So we have index curl, curling nicely. And if I just pull this back slightly and then grab all fingers curl, we're curling it from here as well. And if I pull uh, all fingers curl back to zero, we can only go back to the extent of index curl. So it's just kind of a way to increase all fingers all at once. And if you animate these in tandem, you can get some very natural curling of the hands into a fist. So now we're going to need a way to uh, have this same action take place in all the fingers. Fortunately, due to the wonderful world of copying and pasting, we can do this very, very quickly. So let's scroll down here to our wonderful if statement, which uh, I don't know about you guys. I don't want to type the same complex stuff over and over again. I mean, it took enough brain power for me to get past <laughs> that if statement. So what I'll do is I'll grab the whole if statement and hit Control-C. We'll jump down one cell and hit Control-V, and another cell and hit Control-V, and another cell and hit Control-V. So there's one, two, three, four, one for each finger. Now the index finger was C2. We know just from uh, the order in which we place everything, if we keep that order in our heads, that just underneath our index finger is going to be our middle finger. The next one down would be, of course, C3. So we'll just take every occurrence of C2 in this line and change it to C3 and press Enter. We'll jump down below to the next line. We'll change that value to C4, which will be, of course, the ring finger. And finally to C5, which will be our pinky finger. So now we'll scroll back up to the top, and now it's time to go ahead and just start plugging in our values into our fingers. So here's what I'm going to do again, just to minimize the amount at which I have to type, because I'll make typos if I type too much. We'll hit Control V, and I'll change this to C11, which is the next cell down, because we this is a uh, the cool thing about this uh, this spreadsheet style system. As long as you keep in your head the order in which you place everything, as long as you have good organization, it's very easy to hook things up very quickly. So now I'll grab this whole thing, and we'll place this in the location for all three of the middle fingers, oh, middle finger knuckles. And now let's test this out. Uh, I'll set my index rotation back to zero. So middle curl is curling the middle finger, as you can see. Let's rotate around to get a nicer shot of that. So index curling, all fingers curl, grabs both of them at the same time. Very and nice. it'll curl them both into a fist for us, but won't let us go past their duration in the minimum direction. So now, let's just move on down our list. We'll go here to our uh, ring finger, and I'll just hit Control-V. I'll select this and set this to C12. Then I'll grab the whole thing and hit Control-C. We'll jump down to the next line, Control-V. Next line, Control-V. And just real quick, because I like to test things, we'll test this out. So here's ring curl doing the same thing, and I imagine that all fingers curl will affect that as well. So we'll set that back down. Now, pinky, I'll paste, we'll go to 13, grab the whole thing, copy, jump down, paste, and jump down again, paste. And now with that, let's go ahead and test out the pinky curl. So pinky is indeed curling, 
and all fingers curl grabs everybody. So if I want, I can grab index, rotate a little, middle a little more, ring a little more. So we have this nice sort of natural curling of the hands. And then if I grab all fingers curl, we pull into a fist. Very nice. So that's going to handle all of our uh, finger curling, which was the, uh, the main focus of this video. So that wraps up everything I wanted to cover in this video. If you found this a little confusing with some of the math or if statements, just be sure to review it. It's really not that bad once you get into it. If you don't like um, placing like C2 plus C9 and all these multiple parentheses, remember that you can take cells, like I could have taken a separate cell and put inside of it C2 plus C9, and then just made reference to that cell here inside the if statement. Right. So break these up as low level as you need to so they make sense to you. Always remember your own workflow. So with that, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.